In Matthew 7, 7, Jesus says this. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. This verse, like a number of verses in the New Testament, says that if we pray and we ask God for the things that we need, God's going to give us what we've asked for. And it really is a wonderful promise. The only problem is we all know that we don't get everything that we've prayed for. So the question is, how should we understand um, the verses in the Bible like this one? Well, let me begin by saying that I think God generally answers prayer with three kinds of answers. Sometimes I think God says yes, sometimes God says no, and there are times when God says wait. Yes, of course, is very easy for us. We've gotten what we've asked for. No is obviously a lot harder. So let's dig into that. So when we talk to people or they speak to us, we understand that there are always some unspoken or implied limits in the things that they say. And we're all aware of that. For example, if we had a friend who said to us, what's mine is yours, we would understand that as a generous statement of they're willing to share what they have with us, but we would understand there were some limits on it. We wouldn't expect them to sign their house over to us or to give us their wife or their husband. In the same way, if we had a friend who said, I'll do anything for you, we would understand that as a really nice statement of their willingness to help us out in some deep ways. But we would know that there were some limits on that too. For example, they wouldn't do something that was harmful for us. If we were an alcoholic and we were wanting them to go and buy us alcohol, they'd probably say no. They might have other limits. They might not be willing to break the law for us. So we all understand that there are these unspoken or implied limits in what we say, that those are a normal part of our communication pattern. And yet somehow when people come to the Bible in Jesus, they want to ignore all of that. And that's not really right. So in the same way that there are some limits on the things that people say, we would also understand that there are some limits on what Jesus says here. For example, God is not going to give us things that are, for example, selfish or harmful to us or someone else. God's not going to grant a prayer if we're trying to manipulate him or get him to do some kind of trick for us to impress other people. God may say no because he has a different plan in mind for us. In fact, he may have something even better in mind for us. Sometimes it can seem like God has said no, but in fact, God has said wait. And in time, we actually do get the thing that we've asked for. But there is a certain amount of the time where God has said no, and uh, we don't really understand the reason why. And we just have to trust his will. In fact, Jesus says that very thing in the Lord's Prayer. He says that we're to pray, thy will be done. So God's not going to grant some prayers because they're not uh, in line with his will. Now, an interesting experiment that I have done with a lot of prayer groups and small groups over the years to kind of explore this whole uh, area of, of God's answers to prayer is to ask them to meet regularly or, or when they meet to pray and then to chart all of the requests that they make to God and then to check back on those requests regularly and see what God's answer was. And, and they would do this over three to six months or, or longer. And every single group that I've had do this has found that God responds yes to far more of their prayers than they ever imagined. In fact, most of their prayers are responded to with a yes. And then uh, in, in some cases where God has said no, I asked them to kind of review over the months why. And in a good number of those cases, in retrospect, they're able to understand why God said no, something different, something better. Maybe they understand that their motives weren't all that they should be. In some cases, what seemed like a no turned out to be a wait, and they got what they wanted. So most of the prayers, the vast overwhelming majority of their prayers were either answered yes, or if there was a no, they understood why. But there always was, and there always will be, that certain number of prayers where God has said no, and we, for the life of us, cannot really understand why. And in those cases, we have to just trust that God's will is at work, and that his will is better than our will, even when we can't see it and even when it doesn't feel like it. And this, my friends, I think is how we can best understand 
uh, these verses in the New Testament that say that we'll get what we ask for. We'll get really what's best for us and we can trust God with that.